The 1st of August is one of the most important dates in Guyanese history. It commemorates the day 171 years ago when the enslaved Africans in Guyana and other parts of the British Empire, especially the Caribbean, became free. The single most significant event of the 19th century, and certainly one of the most momentous of the entire course of Guyanese history, took place on August 1, 1838. On that day, a company of the 1st West India Regiment, with colors flying and band playing, marched to the public buildings on Brig Dam in Georgetown. There, an officer of the regiment proclaimed the act of freedom. With one stroke, it seemed nearly 85,000 Africans were set free and 200 years of enslavement in Guyana came to an end. This act was the fitting finale of the enslaved Africans' relentless fight for freedom. In effect, it was the last stage of the most intense and bitter period which lasted 33 years from 1805 to 1838. African emancipation should be seen not as a sudden act of grace by the British, but as part of a wider process. It involved individuals and organizations on both sides of the Atlantic. It had its supporters and opponents, and it was complex, long, and bitter. The 1st of August could be called the birthday of Guyanese nationhood. This is because in preparation for African emancipation, European planters had already embarked on an indentured immigration scheme in which several thousand Europeans, especially from Madeira, Malta, and Britain, had started arriving to work on the sugar plantations. On May 5, 1838, nearly three months before emancipation, the first East Indians landed. In later years, thousands of Chinese, West Africans, and West Indians were also brought to Guyana. Together with the Amerindians, Africans, and European planters already here, the new immigrants were woven into the ethnic tapestry of what was to become the Guyanese nation. Emancipation also started the complete transformation of the local landscape. This is because thousands of free men and their families who had carefully hoarded their meager savings eventually started leaving the plantation yards and purchased plantations where they founded free villages all along the coastland. Known as the African Village Movement, this was the birth of free villages among which were Buxton, Better for Wachting, Friendship, Hopetown, Greenstown, Victoria, and others. Emancipation also diversified the economy which had been dominated by sugar and cotton. Coinage had to be introduced in large amounts to pay wages and facilitate sales of commodities and banks were opened to garner savings and make loans. New food crops were cultivated to satisfy the consumer demands of a populace which now had freedom of choice. Freed from the plantations, Africans settled in the towns and acquired new skills as craftsmen, waterfront workers, railway men and sailors. They also moved into the hinterland to pioneer new industries such as balata bleeding, gold mining and logging. The police and prison services were started. The elementary education system was established and the governmental administrative apparatus was improved. Most of all, emancipation created a large population of free persons. Free men and women who could practice their religion and pursue their cultural interests. Educated persons of all races started to agitate for civil and political rights. There was great social ferment as newspapers were printed, local government reforms were introduced, and the constitution had to be revised. As a result, the former enslaved Africans, indentured Chinese, Indians, and Portuguese, and the Amerindians won political rights and enjoyed the opportunity to elect their own representatives. Emancipation Day, therefore, should be regarded as a most important landmark in Guyana's national march to freedom.